Oma, what is next? Well, Leia, next up, if you click my teleprompter, I could tell you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I see that we've got a great, amazing crowd here today, and you all look wonderful. But I see that you guys might look a little bit tired, and I want to remind you guys that this is day one of a Binance blockchain event happening in Dubai. So let's get some energy, let's get a round of applause, and let's all be excited for our next session. Can we hear it, guys? There you go. All right. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the co-founder and chief operations officer of Elrond Network, Lucian Tudea. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome aboard. Welcome, Lucian. If you can introduce us to your panel, please. Hello. Today I want to share with you a shocking conclusion uh, of our recent uh, research. Payments uh, will disappear. Uh, not today, not tomorrow, but sometimes in the future. Um, I don't mean that they will disappear in the context of a uh, post-scarcity world where technology will help humanity to stop fighting over uh, basic resources, but instead together look upwards towards the stars. Um, this will very likely happen, um, uh, this will very likely happen, but uh, before that, um, I believe payments will disappear in a different manner. My name is Lucian Todia. I'm founder of uh, Elrond, the scalable blockchain focused on payments and the new metaverse economy. Now, let's think a bit about what happened to communications in the last few decades. We started out writing a few letters per month, then making a few calls uh, every week, and then several texts and emails each day. And now we are up to tens of messages every hour. Hundreds or even thousands of uh, them, if you can't count likes, shares, uh, notifications, or scenes as messages, which they are. And that's just taking into consideration the personal aspect. Business communication make up the bulk of uh, uh, data traffic and uh, data creation, and right now amounts more than 10 exabytes. That, by the way, is 10 billion gigabytes. For reference, it is estimated that uh, all words human uh, mankind will ever spoke, uh, it's estimated to be around five exabytes. Of course, not uh, taking into account my, my wife, but that's a different story. Think about it. Communication is already disappearing, to a certain extent at least. And I don't mean that it's not happening, but actually it happens uh, more than before. So let's think about a few examples. Our watch tells our friends about um, our achievements, our fitness achievements. Uh, our phones tells our lights to turn on when we get close to our home. Um, or, for example, rain sensors cause uh, irrigation systems, and so on. We send and receive thousands of messages per day, a lot, if not most of them, without actively engaging in communication, per se. Which means that, in a way, communication is already disappearing, to some extent, at least. It does happen, but is no longer apparent. So, this is all happening because communication is fast, inexpensive, global, and automatic. So, also payments can be as fast inexpensive, global, and automatic as, as communications. Actually, soon payments will be embedded in communications. Payments and data transfer become indistinguishable from one another. Imagine a request for information which includes the payments in the requested data, uh, it includes the payment for the requested data in the request itself, uh, with a trustless blockchain layer um, 
scrolling the transaction and settling it as soon as uh, all parties automatically are content with the, with the outcome. And maybe payment is not that just done in the form of currency, but also done uh, in the form of data. It could be your search history or deeper access to your social media metadata, your movie preferences, or any such surface data that could tell a richer story about your customer profile. Or perhaps the data exchanged is much more valuable, much more personal. Like uh, data from wearables um, about how a certain song or a certain commercial uh, made you feel, how it elevated your blood pressure, dilated your pupils, raised your attention level. Or, for example, your eye movement inside a VR headset, which tells uh, what caught your attention uh, and in what context. This data is incredibly valuable, as I'm sure the Facebooks and Googles of the world will agree. Data is money, and because it's money, the basic monetization of, uh, of the internet is that users pay with their data in, order, in exchange for free services which is somewhat similar with the blockchain trilemma of decentralization, scalability, and security, creates a dilemma for the average web to users, which basically says that the internet has three main properties. It is personalized to their needs, it, it, it keeps their uh, uh, data private, and it's free to use. And of course, since it's a trilemma, you can only choose two of those of those three. Either is personalized and free for those kind of users who use the same kind of login like Facebook Connect. They don't use an ad blocker, of course, and giving us this way their privacy along the way. Or it could be private and free. For those users who care a lot about their privacy and use sensible security measures and privacy tools such as uh, VPN, tools, ad blockers, but whose experience on the web is as generic as the default info displayed to unknown people without customizations, without recommendations, uh, based on their preferences, uh, habits, uh, or network of friends. And if you really want to be private online, even in a, in a paid environment, Web2 technologies can't really guarantee you that's for you. So you are better off in your off-the-grid cabin somewhere in the mountains. So the question is, can Web3 solve this trilemma? Maybe. Blockchain-based decentralized IDs can prove our identity and carry our assets across multiple metaverses. Data can become an asset that you truly own and monetize and thanks to zero knowledge proof and other similar technologies, you can choose to share it in a fully anonymous manner without decreasing its value along the way. Taking things a step further, in the metaverse, everything is made of data. And data, it's also at its core the way of transferring value, either directly as data or denominated uh, in some digital currency. Their payments will literally happen with a blink of an eye, with a hand gesture. And AI will further be able to automate future behaviors based on observed patterns. The act of taking time out of your busy day to make, to make cash payments, write a check, scan a QR code, uh, punch a pin code in a card reader, or uh, confirming uh, biometrically an uh, NFC payment will no longer be needed. Payments will disappear. But until they can do that, they first need to evolve from where they are right now. So we are still very early where cryptocurrencies, from all their uh, virtues, have drawbacks. Here's how we are tackling them at Elrond one by one. We are building a very high level, uh, highly scalable blockchain layer 
who throughput can scale beyond the scale with demand beyond 100,000 transactions per second through sharding or parallelization, if you want. With 3,200 validator nodes, we are only one of the most decentralized and largest proof of stake networks out there. And we are also carbon negative by offsetting more carbon than the network's already modest footprint is accountable for. Crypto will onboard the next 1 billion users easier if we think about their needs. So that's why we created Maya. This Maya is a mobile app that allows anyone to onboard Web3 in seconds. It has right now close to 1 million users, just one year after its launch, thanks, thanks to its intuitive simplicity and blockchain-based attestation mechanism happening in the background. It's also the coolest um, DeFi and NFT wallet. And actually, through Maya app, right now, hundreds of thousands of users connect to the Maya DEX. Maya DEX being the first DEX launch on Elrond a few months ago and that attracts right now more than $1.3 billion uh, in value locked, and also since its launch, uh, processed a volume of more than $3 billion. Also, we recently completed the acquisition of uh, Twispay. Twispay is an e-money licensed financial institution that will help us enable to explore stablecoin space at an institutional at European level. Twispay is also a Visa and MasterCard principal member that will make for some interesting crypto debit cards and virtual IBANs from our users. We also acquired recently Utrust. Utrust is a crypto payment processor that enables anyone to become a Web3 merchant by integrating a plugin in mere seconds into any of the most known e-commerce suits. So they can sell their product uh, against crypto and receive fiat nearly instantly and for a small fee. Utrust also recently um, got a license from the Portuguese Central Bank, opening some more interesting avenues for exchanging digital assets. Also with, with, with Utrust, we are looking to develop a very exciting product that we call Merchant Yield. Merchant Yield essentially turns the payment processing service from a cost into an income stream. So instead of paying one, two, three percent or more, merchants can earn it. Of course, this can be possible thanks to synergies with our DeFi primitives, staking, web three payments, and more. Think about it. Trillions earned instead of paid by builders and merchants instead of the middleman. What will that world look like? Elrond is also home to the transportation company of the metaverse, Holoride. Holoride's technology will be in Audi cars beginning with June this year. They also have some uh, special deals with Disney, Marvel, Universal, Porsche, Daimler, Ford, and others, whose entire uh, content economy will be blockchain-based. Until now, Immersive technologies have been mostly visual, but Holoride includes the real-time physical feedback of your car you are in, making your experience more intense. So you really start to feel what you see. With Holoride, reality comes part of the game. Elrond is also home of Ethereum. Ethereum is a web free brokerage platform that converts business and user data into monetizable, monetizable assets. Ethereum is actually incubated right here in Dubai in collaboration with our partners for Morningstar, from Morningstar Ventures. They have this really cool technology called NFME, which uses NFT technology to create data avatars, which are like the regular metaverse avatars, but enriched with data assets for faster value and more personalized experiences. So as you can see, there are many builders and dreamers on Elrond. They are all exploring Web3 web technology at an internet scale. 
they are join joining us to tackle some of the problems uh, I mentioned before, or perhaps the ones that we have yet to discover. We invite you to join them and join us and help make the world into what it needs to be because it's time to build. Thank you.